Hi there, my name is Shelley Maki, and I am uh, a faculty member for interior design at College of DuPage. I'm here to speak today about Marion Monty Griffin, um, and she is one of the women I'd like to feature with uh, Women's History Month this month, and I will enjoy um, telling you more about her. Um, she was born in 1871 and lived until 1961. And she is known as one of the first um, American female architects and artists. Um, one of the things that is not maybe as well known is that for Marianne's um, childhood, she was actually um, grown up in a very progressive household. Her father died early on and her mother, um, you know, surrounded herself with women who were focused on being activists, both for women's suffrage and also for social and educational reform. In fact, on her mother's side, um, she had a, um, a uh, the family had a friendship with Abraham Lincoln, who oftentimes came to um, be seated around a table with her, her mother and friends. So I wanted to also mention how that I think made an impact on um, kind of where she came to stand later in her professional career. Um, you can see her artwork here is just stunning. Uh, in 1980, or pardon me, 1894, she was the second woman to graduate from MIT with an architecture degree, and she was known as being an outstanding draftsman. Um, she went on to work in the office of Frank Lloyd Wright from 1895 to 1909, and you can see her presentation um, drawings were just um, fantastic. And oftentimes, uh, she was not giving credit. She did not have her name on the work. In fact, um, you know, the, um, you know, obviously working for the firm, the firm's name was on the work instead of her own. So she not only designed furniture and lighting and stained glass and any other uh, decor that was in um, going into these spaces, quite a number of built-ins, but she was also known for her presentation work, which also gained quite, um, quite a renown. Uh, she was heralded as a master draftsman while in uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's office. However, in 1909, um, as is famously um, mentioned in the movie Loving Frank, um, Wright abandoned his practice and traveled to Europe um, with, an, uh, with a wife of a client. They were having an affair. And the Mani's, um, uh, you know, situation there because she had been obviously given quite a lot of project work, um, you know, was that she ended up taking over a number of the projects that he um, left and left hanging. Uh, so she finished them um, and oftentimes she had already done most of the design work on them. Um, and again, um, he had asked her to take over the practice. She actually declined and it was given to Herman von Holst. Um, he who then asked Mani to stay um, and to lead the design and completion of so, so many of these very high profile um, um, homes. So this was something um, that led to, uh, you know, she, she actually had um, met her future husband while working in Frank Lloyd Wright's um, office. And, um, and you can see the picture of them, and that's Walter Burley Griffin um, and um, Marion. And they ended up, uh, he ended up coming and working under Von Holst, and then um, they decided to work under uh, their own firm. So they were united after matrimony by their shared ideals, and they were um, very, both pretty progressive. Um, they were married in 1911, and they soon entered a competition that was um, really um, amazing, that was about Australia's new capital. Uh, you can see here um, in the watercolors that Mani, um, you know, portrayed um, for Griffin's design, um, you know, really were key in securing uh, first prize commission for that plan. So they ended up moving to Australia in 1914 in regards to facilitating um, that the building and um, went on to have other commissions in turn. Um, Walter was also then after they um, completed that all he was invited to design a library in india and he moved there uh, in 1935 with her following shortly after in 1936. Um, marion took charge of the office and she also 
uh, designed many um, of the other uh, specialty commissions, and she oversaw the design of many buildings. Um, one of the things that, that followed Marion was that she definitely uh, let him um, kind of maybe take the credit sometimes for some of her work because she felt that they were a team uh, and, um, and so they were a unit in her opinion. After he died, um, because he died a year after uh, they had arrived in India, she ended up returning to Australia, closing um, her office there, and then uh, returning to the United States. She pretty much retired from architecture at that time. Um, however, she did spend the next 20 years working on a book. It was a large manuscript called The Magic of America, which is now available through the Art Institute of Chicago um, online, if you're interested in finding out more. Mary Monty Griffin uh, passed away in 1961 at 90 years old, and she's buried in Graceland Cemetery. Um, I should mention that the beach um, in Rogers Park has been named after her, and she does have surviving works that include a small mural in the George B. Armstrong Elementary School, as well as several homes in Decatur. I also think uh, that it's great that the Australian Institute of Architects um, have honored her work with an annual award for a distinctive body of work by a female architect for architectural education, journalism, research theory, professional practice, or built architectural work. I hope you enjoyed finding out more about her, and I hope um, that you find more about her in um, the future. She is a fantastic icon in the architecture field for women.